if our ideas, if our beliefs are clear, if they're clear in our mind, and if we're able to communicate them clearly, even if they're very different from another person, that is the basis for a greater unity. And that's a really interesting thought because it's very different from how we think about getting along with people who are different than us. We kind of have this instinct that we got to keep away the differences. We got to shy away from talking about religion or politics or where we're different. But Chesterton is saying, it's not the difference. It has to be a clear difference. And as long as it's clear, we can walk right up to that person's ideas and see them and understand them and find a lot of commonality with that person, despite the difference. I know I believe that's true. Like I found that true in conversation. I think it explains a lot of what we see in our world today, that as our ideas have become murkier, unclear, unprocessed, because we can't really talk about them, especially with someone who's gonna challenge us a little bit, our ideas get fuzzier and more vague, but that again, in the end, that doesn't uh, make it easier for us to get along with other people. It creates a greater hostility, a greater mm -hmm. barrier between us and other people. Yeah, and I think in, in practicality, yeah. in a conversation that is difficult with another person, the best thing to do, sometimes I think we need to, and th maybe this is how our education system sets us up, we need to provide the better argument. But I would say if you're in a conversation with someone you don't agree with, you should probably continuously ask them questions so that what they ask actually believe becomes more and more clear to you, which and is what them. you're saying. And to yeah. them, yeah. I mean, we've yeah. talked about that before on the show that it's good for people to get out their immature and unprocessed thoughts in the safe space of a conversation with someone that they trust. Because a lot of times, if stuff's just in your head, they're impressions or yeah. thoughts or like maybe an overarching paradigm. Mm -hmm. But then once it comes out of your mouth, you have to think about it. You have to see how that other person receives it. Yeah. And if you get a, a twinge of something from the other person, you're like, huh, I wonder what part of them made that face. Mm -hmm. Was that the right thing to say? Did I really mean that? Did I mean it in that way? You know, I was having a conversation earlier this week about someone calling someone else's views violent and dangerous. And I thought to myself, like, if this person that I, I know and I love has these violent and dangerous thoughts, mm -hmm. I don't want them to stay in their head. I want it to come out so that they have to realize that it came out and the other person had to receive it. And then maybe it's not just stuck inside their head so that we can discuss it mm -hmm. and it can mature and we can come to a better understanding Understanding. Yeah, like sometimes we're we're so uncomfortable with someone else being wrong as we perceive or as we as we think about them that we're we're hesitant to you know even let them get their argument out there. We have to immediately jump in and correct them and show them where they're wrong and shout them down. But again, sometimes I, I think all of us to some degree, maybe some more than others, we process our ideas out loud. Yeah, from you know? the person who has I have no interior monologue, and, and it doesn't so help. It's important for me to say right. things. Right, and, and you, you <laughs> and you don't really have you're not really helped in cl in clarifying and understanding your own thinking by telling it to someone who just nods along and says, oh yeah, totally. You know, I heard X, Y, and Z, and that guy's a bad guy. And those, that other party, the other side is doing all ter terrible things. Yeah, you're right, man. You're right. That doesn't help us clarify our thoughts. That doesn't force us to challenge our own reasoning, to challenge our sources, to challenge the relevance and the surety of our data. We need to have someone who challenges us a little bit, who provides a foil. We get those ideas out there a little bit and we're forced to put them into precise words. If the communication doesn't happen, we're forced to refine those words. The, the idea is not here that you're going into it expecting or even desiring that in that one conversation, you're going to eliminate all difference. The point of that conversation is to build a bridge and to clarify a little bit. It seems to me that uh, you want to go into a conversation with someone different from you. So one aspect of it, I would say, is clarifying your own ideas and, and theirs. Another term for that, what you brought up is like steel manning the other person's arguments. You want to hear their arguments, hear their ideas. And a, and a good practice is even to res restate them back to that person and then ask them, did I get that? Did I restate that well? Is that basically what you're saying here. So you said all this, but I'm hearing is this, 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 that I get it. And then even really use your own intellect and try to make that their position, their actual position better so that A, you can understand it. Mm -hmm. B, you show them that you understand it. And then C, take it as far as your intellect can take it, you know, and then let your side work upon their best argument. Right. It's So it's a steel man versus a straw man. We're a world that relishes straw men. You know, again, that's the situation we find ourselves. We have sides getting further apart and creating bigger and scarier and more ridiculous and ludicrous straw men of the other side. And the problem is, again, that that eliminates the possibility for conversation. So again, what you want to try to help another person do is clarify their own thinking, mm -hmm. because you also can't argue against an idea that makes no sense. And most of our ideas, most of the time, don't make sense until we're forced to put them into words, refine them a little bit, clarify them, you know, really think, well, why do I think that? And so it's sometimes not until you help the other person clarify their own ideas that you can even then provide a counter argument saying, okay, now that we see what you mean here, here's what I would say.